I'm Preston Spratt here at Sprattronics Learning Lab, and this is our next lesson for our LEGO Robotics program. We're ready now for grabber number two. So we'll click on build, we'll go over here to grabbers, and then we can click grabber two. Just like our previous build, we're going to lay everything out so that it matches the picture, and this one will start out like our other grabber in that we're building an attachment base so that our motor can be modular. And just like last time, I recommend tilting it up to make sure that your build matches what you're seeing in your picture. So we will add attach this double set of pins and then two pins in the part of the L that's going down. We'll hold it up. We see it matches what's in the directions. And now we're ready for our motor. And just like last time, We'll line these wheels up so that our motor is at zero, zero. We'll put it face down on the table and we attach this to the back side. When I look at the picture, I see it matches. A little bit different this time in that we are going to take that H shape and go ahead and add the two pins to it. And we'll attach the L so that the H is on the back side. Two more pins, and those arrows show us they're coming in from the side opposite of how we're holding it. And then just like last time, we're going to attach the black pins into the blue part of our motor. We know we did this right because our gray pins are all facing each other. If you give that a little pinch, you'll notice it's not totally sturdy, so we will be doing some things to strengthen that as we build. The first step of strengthening that is going to be to attach this purple piece right here onto the bottom side. And just like earlier, I recommend the wire stays in front of that purple piece so that it can be out of the way whenever you plug in later. So our motor's facing down. We are going to add a pin to both sides of the axle. We'll put a short three peg beam into that axle. And then on the back end, we'll take a three beam right across that first set of gray pieces. We're now ready to put our purple five beam onto the motor. We'll press it down firmly. We'll see that we have a Technic peg on top and just below the yellow axle piece, but that the outside pegs are empty. Those outside pegs won't stay empty for long. We're attaching a black pin onto both sides. All right, so our mechanism that is gonna force everything to move is this white piece, and in one side of it, we're gonna put a tan pin that has a pin on top and an axle on the bottom. Set that down. On top of it, turn it so it looks like the picture. On top of it, we'll take the pinhole side of the blue piece and attach it, leaving the axle side open, but not for long because we're gonna attach that axle side onto our yellow axle so that it hangs down. So like earlier, right now it can turn, but we want it facing down parallel to that purple piece. We can set that off to the side. We're now ready to start working on our claw. Now, this is where a lot of our students here in the lab need some extra help because as they build this claw, they start to combine things before they're ready. So we'll start with a tan axle piece and that axle piece will go right into the axle portion. We'll skip a hole. We'll skip a hole and next to it, we are going to put a Technic pin just like that. That black color is hard to see in the camera. All right, into the end of it, we are going to attach this purple piece. If I pop it up like that, it'll look just like the picture. And then into the purple piece, we have these blue pegs. One side is too long, the other side is one long. We'll put the short side into the purple piece like that. We're gonna take a nine long beam now, and it's going to go on to those blue pieces. 
and you'll notice that we skip a hole in the middle, it goes in those first two pieces, and that this part lines up. And then into the end of this, we're gonna put a black Technic pen on the far side of it. There we go. Onto these blue pens, we're gonna add another purple square. And then, like we built earlier, we're gonna take one of our curved pieces, but instead of going into the top of them, we're gonna put these pieces into the back side of them. So we will put a tan piece into the back side, and then a black pen right there. I always find it's easier to lay it on the ground and press directly into it. So if you lay it like this, you should see you have the tan piece at the end, skip a hole, have a black Technic piece. If you stand it up like this, it'll look just like your picture. And I see that we are going to press this into that other purple piece, making one side of our claw. All right, we are ready to attach this claw onto our motor. And you'll see we have this pin facing up. We're not gonna do anything with that pin this time, but in the hole next to that pin is where we're gonna place this black pin on the back. And so right there is where we attached this. So it's only attached in one spot. That would be the pivot point right there. And then we can set this off to the side because we need to build the other half. Again, this is one where I recommend just follow each step, just like what the picture shows. So we have two of these rubber pieces side by side, and we're gonna place four of these short axles into those rubber pieces. So one, two, three, and then four, and they're just standing there. Now, we're gonna take a curved piece like this. One of these is going to go in here and then the other one is gonna skip a space and go into the second one. Now this one is loose, so it'll fall out. So it's convenient just to set it on your table, but it'll look like that. Let me get this farther out of the way. And then on those two axle pieces that are farthest away from you, we're going to attach this beam that's nine pegs long. Again, it's gonna go the very end into one axle, skip a hole, and then go into the next axle. If you pick this up, these things all fall apart. So we need to lock them in place using two more rubber pieces. So those rubber pieces will slide right on, slide right on. Now you can pick it up without it falling apart and you can wiggle it just a little bit. These rubber pieces or shocks give us a little bit of wiggle room, but still hold things firmly. Now we're ready to attach it to the claw we already have built. And we're not going into the very last hole, we're going into the second to last hole, just like you did on the other side. We still have this white piece facing down. So we set it on top. And now we're gonna to need to do a few things to lock everything in place. So I'm gonna take this axle piece Make sure that that white piece is down. It's gonna go into the one, two, third space, straight down, and lock into the white piece. So now this doesn't move as easily. And just like last time, we now have a pin on top here and a pin down on the bottom here. We're gonna lock those in place using one of these H pieces. And so we should put a pin in here and here when we set it on top. So it's gonna lock everything in place. Down here, right here. And what this does is it makes it so that when this motor turns, it forces all the motion to happen inside this white piece. And as it moves just a little bit, it'll open and close. 
All right, so you're done with this motor and let's attach it. Replace grabber one. Easy to replace grabber one, just unplug your motor from port A. I like to put my thumb on the purple piece and press straight up. My grabber one comes off, but it's still together because it's modular. And now we're ready to attach grabber two. Presses down, purple piece holds everything in place right there. Our program will still work with this because we're gonna plug right back into motor A. I'll go back and give everything just a quick adjustment. And now you're ready to run that exact same program to make your grabber two work. I'd love to see how this grabber two compares to grabber one. What is it good at picking up? What is it not good at picking up? But go ahead and do some experiments or some tests with it. For our challenge, we're going to do two different tests. You need to gather up some supplies. We need to get some litter to test our grabbers. You're going to need one Lego brick, one empty plastic bottle, a ball of crumpled paper, a stack of Lego wheels. Now you can attach all these wheels together using a long yellow axle through the middle of all of them. And then finally, we need something heavy and round, and that could be an apple or a baseball or a lacrosse ball or any other round fruit. We're going to do our first test. And our first test is seeing which grabbers can pick up objects that are small or large. For test number one, you need to grab your plastic water bottle, your crumpled ball of paper, and your Lego brick. Use each grabber and try to pick up each one. Give it a score of one point if it can grab, lift, and move the object. Give the grabber a score of zero if it grabs the object, but then drops it when you're trying to move it. And then we're gonna give it a negative one point if it doesn't grab or lift the object. If you can't even pick it up with the grabber, that's gonna score a negative one. Once you've done this challenge, determine which grabber is better for picking up large objects and which one is better for picking up small objects, or is there overall better grabber? For test number two, we're gonna be testing object weight. We're going to need to repeat that test, but this time we're going to use three objects that are of similar size, but very different weights. We'll use the apple as our heavy object, a ball of crumpled paper as our light object, and the wheels as a medium weight object. So do the same test, scoring it the same way, and which grabber is the best. So, What's your conclusion? Which grabber is the best for small objects? Which grabber is the best for heavy objects? Go ahead and tell or explain to somebody which grabber you think is better and why. This is your product review.